in this figure you can see in this figure you can see different regime where you can have different decay processes okay so this is nothing but uh, the number of neutrons versus number of protons uh, graph so this is that is nothing but number of protons okay this is, this number of protons and uh, in this y axis we have number of neutrons so uh, we can observe that the, when the number of neutrons increases, so when the number of proton increases, that is along x-axis. This is along x-axis. When the number of protons increases along this x-axis, there is number of neutrons, which is also increasing in the y-axis. Okay, so if you if you consider the same number of neutrons and protons, for example, we can see from here six number of neutrons, number of protons, and six number of protons. We have this point. Okay, and if you consider uh, in this particular case twenty eight number of protons and twenty eight number of neutrons, then we have this point. And if you have uh, some eighty two number of protons. And 82 number of uh, neutrons, this is 82. So this, you can have different points. And if you join those points, then you will get a straight line, like this, this one, OK? So that is where you are having this straight line. This is where you are having your n equal to z value. So this is highly stable. When n equal to z, they, these are highly stable. And there are some uh, deviation. There is some deviation from this curve, that's from this straight line. When we observe uh, the experimental results, uh, there is an increase in uh, number of neutrons as compared to number of protons. We can see that the uh, this graph, which is going uh, initially, it is in the same uh, straight line, but when it when it is uh, having large number of protons, it is going uh, away from this straight line. So the straight line, this is the straight line with n equal to z. And the uh, experimental research shows that the number of neutrons increases when uh, more than uh, number of protons when we have more mass numbers. So which means that if you are having uh, n equal to 28 here and n and z you're having uh, some uh, values for neutrons then some of these two that is neutrons and proton will give you mass number so if you consider higher mass number which means that somewhere here we can see that uh, the uh, number of neutrons are larger than number of protons in this curve number of uh, neutrons are larger than number of protons. And we can say uh, n is greater than z. Okay. So uh, that is what we have uh, observed experimentally. When you increase the mass number, you are having, when you are having uh, higher nuclear size, or the nucleus is which is larger, then you can have a deviation from this straight line. You can observe a deviation from this straight line, and you will be having this condition that is the number of neutrons will be larger as compared to number of protons. Why this is happening? This we already discussed a little bit. So when you are increasing, for example, in the case of helium, if you consider the case of helium, which is very small. So this is having how many? Two protons and two neutrons. So this is uh, an example when you are having your Z, which is equal to N. That is number of protons equal to number of neutrons. So in this case, the helium will be in this line, in this straight line, okay, helium nucleus. 
so it is uh, its mass number is 4 so it is in the in the initial stage of the spectra this this graph okay so it is having uh, equal number of uh, neutrons and protons but when we go for higher nucleons uh, higher uh, nucleus nuclei then uh, we can observe that is a there is an increase in number of neutrons as compared to the number of protons let's uh, let's take this example uh, this example so you can observe from here uh, this is this for example this is 50 this is at 50 and this is at 82 so we can see that this nucleus which is uh, at this point uh, with the some mass number which is having uh, n value let's take in here we have the uh, n value which is 82 that is number of protons and you have a number of proton sorry number of neutrons is 82 the number of proton we have uh, 50 so n is very large than uh, this number so when it reaches when it increase and if you take the sum of this you will get the mass number okay so this will be 132 yeah which is a equal to 132 so this is the nucleus with the mass number 132 which will be having a proton number equal to 50 but neutron number equal to 82 so when you increase the mass number or the the size of nucleus is larger this deviation from n equal to z is larger so uh, this is because we already discussed a little bit so when you are having this and if you are having more number of protons inside okay more number of protons and you are having some uh, neutrons also so when you are having a very large size nuclei uh, then the interaction between these adjacent nucleons that is between proton and neutron will be uh, through the nuclear attractive force through nuclear attraction and it is very strong attraction but when you are having very large nucleus if it is small then it is not a big big issue when you are having large nucleus this uh, this neutron will be attracted uh, with the uh, neighboring neutrons and protons uh, like this okay this is just an example so uh, this neutron will not interact with this neutron or this proton so it will only interact with the neighboring uh, nuclear that we already discussed when we discussed about the nuclear force so nuclear force is a short range and it is uh, acting between these neutrons these nucleons only neighboring nucleons only it will not interact with the other nucleons similarly this, this neutron will interact only with these nucleons this proton interact only with this uh, its adjacent uh, neighboring nucleons so it will not interact in the any any far nucleons but for uh, for the case of protons if you are having more number of protons here okay then this proton and this proton can interact this proton and this proton can interact through a uh, coulombic interaction okay that is through electrostatic force these uh, protons collectively can interact with this proton okay through columbic interaction so if you are having large number of protons then the, all those number of uh, protons can interact with a single proton and with this will cause a very high repulsive force in the nucleus okay so in order to in order to avoid this columbic repulsive force nucleus itself will try to increase the number of neutrons uh, it will try to now increase the number of neutrons and it will produce more attractive force more uh, nuclear attractive force inside the nucleus and it will try to uh, reduce the number of protons and uh, the interaction that is the columbic repulsive force so that is why this uh, there is a difference between neutron number and proton number so proton number should be less 
uh, because there there is there will be some columbic repulsive force inside the nucleus because uh, because when when we are having more number of uh, protons in the nucleus so uh, the nucleus uh, itself will try to increase the number of neutrons when it is having more mass number and it will suppress this nuclear uh, repulsive sorry columbic repulsive force okay so that's why there is an uh, deviation when we are considering a uh, mass number which is larger from the n equal to z uh, line and we can also see that there is a quasi stable or we can say a stable uh, curve in between uh, by this black color this is also stable but this is highly stable n equal to z and uh, when you consider this uh, this case okay uh, where we have uh, let's say like uh, this is having same number of neutrons okay so if you consider this line so all these uh, these nucleons this nuclei having uh, same number of neutrons and they are called as isotons and if i hope you know that so uh, these isotons which means that they have same number of neutrons uh, that is 50. All these mass, these nucleons are having nuclei are having uh, same number of uh, pro, not neutrons. And if you consider protons case, this this uh, mass number of nucleons will be having same number of uh, protons. It is 50 here. Okay, so they they, they are isotopes. So when you consider these isotopes, for example, if this uh, if you consider these isotopes, there are uh, 80, for example, in this case, this is 82 is the number of neutrons, okay? But the number of protons are 50. And uh, this, uh, this blue color, which is shown here, which are uh, unstable, which are not that much stable. And this, uh, this color, which is uh, yellow, uh, we can say the dark yellow, which is uh, also um, not stable, but in between there is a uh, stability uh, in in this this uh, in this black. Term. Okay, these are stable nuclei, or we can say these are the stable isotopes because uh, in this this isotopes, if you consider these are the isotopes, then this is the stable isotopes line. Okay. So when you consider these isotopes, then uh, the the nuclei which is above this line, this uh, stable line, stability line, they will try to come into this line. Okay. Similarly, those nuclei uh, which are below this line also comes towards this line, as you can see from here, in order to have uh, the the stability they will try to come into this line so in the first case we are having more number of neutrons here in this 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 portion so in this blue curve we are having n greater than uh, p so which implies they will try to convert neutron into proton and reduce the number of neutrons increase the number of protons and they will come to towards this uh, this line Okay, they will try to come to this line. Similarly, in this regime, they will uh, they they are having uh, less number of uh, neutrons. Okay, so and in this case, in this particular case, they are having less number of neutrons. Uh, for example, uh, you can see here as compared to the stability line. So here we the only possibility is that they have to convert this. For example, if you consider this particular point, they have to move this direction. So they have to move this direction, okay? In order to, to be in this line. So what they will do, they will uh, try to increase the number of neutrons and go in this line, or and, uh, as well as reduce the number of protons here. So they will try P to N, and they will try to be stable. So in this regime, in this blue curve, we, we, we are having conversion from uh, neutron to proton because we have excess of N 
uh, here here also we have axis of n but we we are having the the uh, stability line which is above so they have to reduce the number of protons to reach in this stability line so this region will be uh, beta plus decay so when you are having a proton which is converting it to neutron which is called as beta plus decay when you are having neutron which is converting into proton and that is beta negative decay okay that we will discuss later when we discuss about the beta decay processes so this is a quick review where this will happen okay uh, and you are also having alpha decay that we are discussing now so the alpha decay will happen in these yellow colors so in this in these regimes where uh, we will be having more number of uh, uh, size is larger and we are having more number of nucleons and the, the 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 nucleus tries to reduce the number of protons uh, by changing that uh, into some different nuclei that is alpha nucleus uh, sorry helium nucleus and that will come out of the nucleus okay it is it is also same concept so for example if you are having a scenario like this uh, a big uh, nuclei uh, a big big nucleus so the, it will try to uh, for example, it will try to catch up these two protons and these two neutrons. Okay, so they join together and come out. So this will be your alpha particle. So it will try to reduce the number of uh, protons so that the nuclear, uh, sorry, the columbic repulsive force will be reduced and the nucleus will become stable. So that is alpha decay. It can be possible, it can happen in this regime that is in yellow color, you can see. And there is uh, also fission process that will happen for heavy mass uh, regime in this green color, uh, especially for uranium, thorium, like uh, heavy nuclei. And we can also have the proton uh, proton decay, uh, that proton emission that is in this region. We can see very slightly, very small. And neutron also we can see from this line, this regime, uh, that is neutron decay. And this is the stability line. So uh, that is the whole uh, process of decay that is happening in nucleus. Uh, and you can understand from this curve what is uh, where is the region where we can observe this beta decay, beta negative, beta positive, and alpha decay. Also fission fusion reactions, fission and proton all all those uh, reactions. Uh, from this curve we can observe where it can happen. So uh, the beta negative decay will happen in this region. They will try to end, convert number of neutrons into proton and come to the stability line. And the beta positive decay will happen in this region. They try to convert the proton into neutron and comes to the stability regime. Okay, stability line is. Okay. So we already discussed about how the beta decay processes can uh, happen and why it is happening by using the neutron proton uh, variation when you go for higher mass numbers. So we will not uh, discuss that now. Okay, so we already discussed when the neutron number increases uh, in, in the nucleus as uh, the mass number increase and that will cause the beta decay processes and they will try to be stable by doing some process, uh, some reactions, some decays and that will result in the uh, beta emission. Okay. So, Let's take one uh, another kind of picture of the same process. Uh, we will be able to take uh, this pen. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's consider the case of uh, reaction of a boron. Uh, this is B with the 5 and 2L. So this is beta decay, okay. Beta decay is 
So B5 jewel that can be decayed into carbon jewel uh, with six atomic number that is the proton number plus uh, some electron. Uh, we have to discuss something about the alpha reaction. That also, so we that we'll discuss later. Okay, some examples of alpha decay that we'll discuss just for uh, some uh, familiarization of those reactions. So, uh, in beta decay, let's say that the boron which is uh, decaying into carbon 12 and it will give you one more electron. So, what is happening here? Uh, you will be having in boron, we will be having how many seven number of boron, which is having seven number of uh, neutrons and uh, five number of protons, right? Then in carbon, we are having 12, so six number of, uh, six number of neutrons. So what is happening here? Let's take uh, the number of neutrons on one side. So seven neutrons. So I can say in each state we'll be having two neutrons. So one, two, three, and fourth one is single. So there are seven neutrons in each energy levels. In each levels we have two neutrons. Because of Pauli exclusion principle, no more than two electrons, no more than two fermions will be in the same state. So uh, there will be two neutrons in a state. So this will be having up spin, this will be having down spin. And uh, this will be the configuration. And if you're having five protons, then your configuration will be, uh, let's take this a black color. Five, so there will be five. What is that? Proton. This has to be explained after uh, the cell model, but your syllabus is like this. So uh, five proton and seven neutron. That is boron. Here uh, we are having. Uh, so what? What is the the best way to stable to stabilize this particular um, nuclei best way to become stable or highly stable is that uh, transfer these neutrons into a proton and be in this level so that there will be an equal number of neutron and proton and it will become stable so that is coming from the nuclear shell model that we'll discuss in the next module. Anyway, when n equal to z, it will be more stable. So it tries to uh, reduce the number of uh, neutrons and convert that into a proton. That is nothing but n, which is converting into p. Okay. 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 Yes. So what is n? n is nothing but uh, neutron, and that is simply. Uh, n, so I cannot write n gives proton and neutron, but I can say n is composed of uh, uh, one electron and one proton. Okay. So when it has to convert an a nucleon and neutron into proton, so this will be neutron plus proton plus e. A neutron will be nothing but proton plus electron. So you will get one proton. A neutron is converted into one proton. So this neutron is converted into one proton. And uh, this is no longer here. And this will be converted into one proton. And they, they, they will be having n equal to z configuration. So both neutron and proton will become equal. And it is very stable now. And that particular configuration with carbon 12 with the 6 as your proton number. So this uh, neutron, which is converted into proton, and that uh, nucleus will become carbon 12 6 plus an additional electron, which is coming from this reaction. 
which will be coming out and this electron with negative charge is called as negative beta or negative beta decay this process is called as negative beta decay process okay so this is what happens when the beta decay process uh, occurs in uh, when when it when the beta decay uh, happens this kind of reactions are occur in in the nucleus so the unstable nuclei become a stable one after uh, emitting uh, this uh, or converting the excess neutron into a proton uh, and which cause emission of uh, this electron also and this process is called as uh, negative beta decay process so uh, how much uh, energy which will be liberated in this process okay. that we have to calculate now uh, for example if you if you calculate that in uh, in atomic uh, masses instead of nuclear uh, so we can have a few So it corresponds to the uh, but the uh, mass of the parent nuclei that is uh, atomic mass we are talking minus uh, mass of the uh, resultant uh, nuclei for example if you have a relation like x times to x dash plus p something like that uh, then this uh, this difference times c square will be your energy which is and this energy will be carried out by this electron okay that is the electron coming out uh, after the beta decay process so these are the atomic masses not the nuclear mass so atomic mass of the para nuclei atomic mass minus atomic mass of the um, the doctor nuclei and multiply with c square you will get the uh, energy in joule so this is in joule but uh, if you want to convert into uh, this into uh, mega electron volt you you do not multiply with c square but multiply with 931.5 mega electron volt okay and this q must be positive for beta decay and uh, there are the different types of beta decay that uh, we already uh, discussed before but so uh, uh, this uh, if you analyze this energy of the beta decay process this is one of the method to draw the graph okay so uh, if you analyze the energy number of beta the number of beta negative for example uh, in this particular case number of beta particles which are emitted versus the energy of the beta particle which is coming out so which means that when the nuclear reaction happens there will be a difference in energy mass and that will be multiplied by c square that energy will be carried out by this uh, electron so we can say that this boron uh, which is converted into carbon plus an electron which is ejecting this electron will be having energy e which is using as the kinetic energy of that particular electron and if you measure the number of beta particles or number of electrons which are coming out of the reaction versus energy then uh, you can see that uh, this curve is a little bit like uh, increasing initially and go back down to the uh, this uh, this will be a little more uh, 
take it till here. So this graph, which is then come back uh, like this, and uh, almost it will hit on this. Okay. So we can observe experimentally that the number of beta particle versus energy graph, if you plot, then it will be like this. So we can have a continuous spectrum, but if you consider this particular reaction, uh, for example, in this particular reaction, boron converting into boron to carbon plus one electron, we can see that this is having some uh, particular energy. Let's take uh, in N2P plus E reaction. So this is N, that is neutron, which is a condensed, which is having particular fixed energy. Okay, so let's take zero and one here. Uh, this this is just a representation. So uh, plus one, and uh, we have minus one here and zero. So this charge is neutralized here because we have proton, which is plus one charge, and no electron, which is negative charge. So this charge is neutral. This charge is also neutral. So this is how the reaction has to be verified whether this is possible or forbidden, something like that. So charge should be conserved. So this proton is having positive charge. This electron is having negative charge. This two of them have normalized or neutralized charge, and that is equal to zero, which is the parent whatever it is converting. Uh, that is the conversion. It, it, it is also important to note, but it is not uh, familiar to you. This is baryon number also should be converted. Um, that. Uh, Conserved, so this is baryon, neutron baryon, proton baryon, electron is not baryon, it is lepton. So this uh, uh, this also has to be con uh, conserved, but uh, that is not the discussion here. So uh, when neutron convert into proton plus electron, uh, this is the reaction. So this neutron is uh, having some fixed energy. This is having some fixed energy. Why? Because this is having associated with some mass and that is converted into a proton and electron. So this proton is having some mass and it is also fixed energy. This is also having some fixed energy. So when a reaction happens, when a neutron convert into a proton and electron, there should be, it should have fixed energy, right? Because uh, it should not have a variation of energy because of, there is no other products. And this proton is not going anywhere. This electron is coming out from the nucleus. Proton remains in the nucleus. So only the kinetic energy uh, uh, will be associated with uh, this electron only, okay? So uh, this is coming out and it is moving and the kinetic energy is all associated with this electron and this is almost fixed uh, and this is not moving uh, because of this reaction and it is inside the nucleus. So only this electron is having that kinetic energy and this is uh, coming out from this particular reaction that is neutron converting into proton and electron and it has no meaning it has no meaning when you observe this energy spectrum or energy versus um, number of particle spectrum we can see that there is difference in uh, number of particles uh, with the different energies okay so how this can be possible in the normal sense what we can say is that if any reaction which is happening in this fashion, if you take the number of uh, particles in this side and the energy in this side, you will not be having different energy. You will be having one particular spike. Okay. And this, uh, this spike can be different uh, for different reaction. Number of particles can be different, but the energy will be the same. Energy has to be the same. And there is, there is, there should be only one spike like this. So there should not be any uh, spectra uh, like this because for a single same reaction, the energy should be one. The energy which is liberated should be one. There is no other mechanism happening here to change that energy. So we expect a spike in the number of uh, particle versus energy curve, but we observed experimentally a spectral or a continuum of uh, uh, in when you are uh, considering the, the number of particles versus energy curve, we have observed a continuum. So uh, from that, uh, uh, we this was a very, very um, 
important research uh, topic on that on those time and uh, why this is coming as a continuum uh, instead of a single line and later uh, fermi uh, suggested that uh, there can be a post there is a possibility that there can be another particle uh, coming out from this reaction let's say uh, if there is something like np come and converting into p plus some electron plus some x some other particle and the uh, energy is sharing in between this so for me assumed or predicted that there can be some particle which is coming with the electron and the energy is sharing between those two and uh, then that can be possible that the energy associated with this uh, particular electron can be varied uh, because there is sharing happens between these two so well, sometimes it can be 90 percentage of uh, energy can be shared with the electron plus 10 percentage with the the unknown particle and it can also be 50 50 chance uh, of energy sharing it can be 10 percentage here or 20 percentage here plus 80 percentage here so in this case uh, different uh, electrons which is coming out will be having different energy uh, depends on how much energy is shared with the uh, unknown particle so this was the concept or the prediction uh, by fermi uh, and uh, and later on the experimentalists just verified that this uh, this particle and this particle is called as a neutrino which is coming out in the uh, in the uh, beta decay process so the process look like uh, this particular x is nothing but your neutrino okay very light mass is having very light mass and carrying out large energy from the electron which is also coming out from this reaction so this explains uh, how how or why this uh, energy is uh, a continuum instead of a instead of a um, single spike in the beta decay process because suppose if you are having uh, let's say uh, for for example this is not the actual value let's say there are uh, some uh, 100 uh, number of beta particles and with this energy we are having 120 beta decay uh, at this point uh, this energy at this energy so at this point we are having um, 120 electrons which is coming out here we are having 100 electrons is coming out for, us, uh, for example if here we are having for example uh, some 40 uh, electrons which are coming out here we are having some 10 electrons which are coming out okay so uh, what is that uh, energy which is coming coming uh, so 10 the number of electrons that is this case which is which can be having some for example some energy uh, let's say this is uh, some kilo electron volt or uh, mega electron volt range okay so uh, that that is uh, that is associated uh, with the electron which is coming out okay so let's say uh, here we have energy of 100 okay and uh, in the second case so let's say uh, we are having uh, 10 electron with 100 of uh, energy and then we have uh, 40 electrons with uh, um what is that uh, let, let's consider for a single reaction uh, there is 100 energy so this this can be some 80 percentage of the energy and uh, this 40 electron will be having some um, that is um, uh, let's take uh, some 60 percentage of uh, the energy and 120 120 number of electrons which are having some uh, let's say some 40 percentage of energy and uh, 100 electrons which are having some 10 percentage of energy so total energy is 100 percentage okay total energy is 100 percentage so this particular number of electrons this number of electrons they are having uh, 80 percentage of electron uh, energy which means that this energy is larger and maximum is the maximum energy is this that is the q value maximum energy is q value 
and the maximum value is here and uh, 80 percentage of that maximum that is here is associated with the 10 electrons and that 10 electrons uh, and the remaining 20 percentage from here 20 percentage will be associated with the neutrinos in this case there are 40 electrons which are coming out which means that along with this 40 electrons there will be 40 neutrinos also coming out uh, neutrinos also coming out from uh, this uh, particular reaction uh, and uh, that can be uh, that can share this uh, total energy 100 percent so 60 percentage of energy associated with uh, uh, 40 number of electrons so the remaining 40 percentage of energy is carried out by taken by these 40 number of neutrinos similarly in here also you can say 40 percentage of energy is associated with 120 electrons so there will be 120 neutrinos which is taking uh, which uh, which has taken 60 percentage of the remaining energy okay so that is the conclusion of uh, fermi's hypothesis and experimentally that is realized later uh, about so uh, but importantly we have to see uh, this neutrino this is anti neutrino so when you are having negative beta decay that is when you are having electron which is coming out with a negative charge okay so this will be associated with anti-neutrino. Anti-neutrino, okay? So this will be associated with anti-neutrino. Uh, we will discuss about uh, how, when it will come uh, for neutrino case. So I hope this is, uh, this uh, you understood already. And uh, we we can also observe one more spectra while, uh, while doing the, uh, the what is that uh, beta decay process after that continuous spectra we can also observe some other spectra mm, so uh, that is uh, a different scenario in the early uh, different scenario from uh, this particular case uh, for example if you consider the cesium to uh, barium case uh, cesium to barium uh, decay beta decay process then we can we observed that uh, there are there is some difference uh, in this particular curve. So we have a continuous spectra, and this is different because this is associated with uh, uh, positive beta decay process. So, so and uh, and this is uh, having some structure like this and coming a peak like this and peak like this and that. So uh, why these peaks are coming? Why these peaks are coming? That was another question. Uh, while, while doing this experimental, uh, so this is the number of uh, particles which is coming out, that the particles, beta particles. And this is the energy. When you consider the case of cysteine barium, we can observe this kind of spectra. So when you are having this kind of spectra, it is not, uh, clear why this is coming. This is uh, then uh, explained by uh, some, through some concept that when you are having beta decay, sometimes the beta decay can be followed by uh, the gamma radiation. So this uh, beta decay after beta decay, for example, X tends to Y plus electron and um, some neutrino that you already know. So this Y can be in excited state, okay? That is daughter nucleus can be in excited state. So this Y again go to ground state uh, with an emission of gamma particles, that gamma radiation. So in, in this energy, we can energy states, we can say like this. So this Y uh, will come to the, uh, the ground state, uh, by emission of one gamma radiation and this gamma radiation can again which will come out from the nucleus so this is all this happens inside the nucleus that the y excited uh, this is your nucleus y that y star then when it comes to the ground state this uh, this emits one gamma radiation and there will be electron outside this and that electron will be here uh, somewhere in the orbits. Okay, so this gamma radiation can hit on this electron and this electron can come out 
along with uh, this particular electron, this will result in additional peak in your spectra. Okay, that's why these peaks are coming uh, in the in this case. And this uh, particular process is called as uh, internal conversion. Internal conversion. So how it is happening? Because of the nuclear de-excitation. So when the doctor nucleus uh, uh, nuclear is formed which is excited, which is in excited form, it will de-excite or it will be coming to the ground state by emission of the gamma radiation with some energy. That energy will be captured by the electron which is revolving this nucleus. And that uh, that is enough, uh, that energy, if that energy is enough to knock out this electron from this uh, particular orbit, then that electron also coming out from the uh, the orbit along with the uh, beta electron which is coming after beta decay process so there will be number of beta uh, alpha uh, sorry electron species so but this uh, electron will be having different energy as compared to this electron but this if there are number of electron species coming out like this uh, for example first from the first shell you will be having this corresponding to K spectrum that is uh, the first from the electrons from the first shell and uh, from the second uh, second shell if it is coming then it is L and etc so on okay so the probability is high for the K because it is very close and it can be ejected very easily after uh, if, if there is enough energy so number of uh, alpha uh, electrons which is coming uh, through internal conversion, which is having higher probability for K shell and then L M, and etc. So this is why uh, there is some additional peak which are coming along with this uh, beta decay experimental observations that is also uh, explained uh, by using this uh, internal conversion concept. Okay, so because of the gamma radiation, uh, the electron in the orbit, not from the nucleus, not from the uh, pro neutron to proton conversion, it is from the orbit which is knocking out because of the gamma radiation with uh, some enough energy and that electron uh, will be coming out of the atom that is, uh, uh, this process is called as the internal conversion. Okay, so uh, that's about uh, that uh, internal conversion process and uh, the additional spikes in your beta decay spectrum. And if you consider again uh, for the case uh, of a different uh, beta decay process, basically we have a negative beta decay, negative beta decay, we can call it as beta negative. And we can also have a positive beta decay, positive beta decay. And we have the third one, which is uh, nothing but uh, the uh, electron capture. Third one is uh, electron capture. So in negative beta decay, we can have uh, the uh, parent nuclei which is converting from it Z uh, to some daughter nucleus of Y with A with Z plus one plus one electron. plus one electron. So uh, what is happening here? So one neutron is converted into a proton. So your uh, atomic number increases. One neutron, uh, which is converted into a proton and an electron. So there will be anti neutron associated with this reaction. That is also important. So uh, this is, uh, the, in this case, one neutron is converted into a proton. So your uh, mass number is fixed because you are already number of nucleons are same because one neutron is converted and another proton is created. So number of nucleons is same, total number of nucleons is same. That is the total uh, number of neutrons and protons. Some of neutrons and protons will be same because one neutron gone, another proton came. So mass number will not change, but uh, the atomic number will change or the Z value will change because you are getting one more proton and proton number of proton uh, number of protons uh, is your atomic number Z. Okay, so that is increased by one here. Yeah. And in this case, what is happening? X uh, with Z and A, which is converting 
uh, into uh, doctor nuclei of Y, and uh, this uh, this in this case we'll be having fixed A, but your atomic number will be reduced by one plus one positive electron, or we call it as positron, and uh, plus one neutrino. Instead of anti-neutrino, with positron we have neutrino. And uh, uh, this reaction is happening uh, by conversion of a proton into a neutron. Conversion of a proton into a neutron plus one positron plus an anti-neutron, sorry, neutron. So this is having plus one charge, this is zero. This is also having plus one charge, this is zero charge. It's also zero. Okay, so uh, that is happening. So in this case, what is happening? What is happening? The proton is converted into neutron. Total number of nucleons same because one proton gone, another neutron came. So total number of neutrons plus proton is same. Uh, and uh, the um, the atomic number is different because you, you lost one proton and the number of proton is your z value. So that will be reduced, is at least reduced. Uh, so that is what is positive decay process. And in the case of electron capture, uh, that is a different story. Uh, that is uh, a z, which will directly take one electron from atomic orbital. That is atomic from the atomic orbit. Uh, and uh, this will be uh, given, this will give you another, uh, another uh, nucleus. Okay, another nucleus. What will happen here is that, uh, your uh, neutron will be added with one electron. Sorry, uh, your proton will be added with uh, your electron. And this will give you one neutron. Okay, so this is plus one, this is minus one, and this is neutron. So this will give you, um, uh, you can say also barium number, uh, that is not required. You just write like uh, charge only, you can write. So uh, this is positive charge, this is negative charge, this will become neutral. And so in this reaction, what is happening? You are having a nucleus, for example, you are having nucleus here, okay? And you need one uh, neutron, that is very important. Uh, so uh, when the nucleus is very much in, uh, in uh, requirement of uh, these particular uh, neutrons because there are enough number of protons and the Coulombic repulsion is large, so what it will try, it will be, uh, it will try to take one proton from this nucleus and convert into neutron so that the repulsive force will be reduced. Okay, so that the nucleus will become stable. So what there is, but there is no hope for that conversion other than what we, uh, what it will do. It will take one electron from the orbit of the atom into the nucleus and that combined with the proton and convert into neutron and the uh, nucleus will become, try to become stable. It will reduce the nuclear uh, electrostatic repulsive or chromic repulsive force. So this is what is happening in case of uh, electron capture. It will take one electron from the orbit and convert, uh, add that electron with one proton and convert the proton into a neutron. Okay, this is electron capture process. So these are the three different types of uh, decay, beta decay processes that can be possible in uh, nucleus. Okay, uh, so I think uh, uh, we can also represent it like uh, in a different fashion. You can have a neutron which is converting into a proton in this case, and that is uh, beta negative decay. And uh, in this case, a proton is converted into uh, a neutron and that is positive beta decay. And in this case, we'll be having a neutron, uh, which is uh, converted, uh, converting into a, a proton. Sorry, a proton is uh, again converted into neutron through, uh, so this process is through electron uh, capture. So this is uh, electron capture. I don't know what is, uh, there is some uh, particular reaction for that. So this is electron capture. So I can say, uh, let's take electron capture. 
so these are the different uh, reactions that can be possible or uh, the beta decay processes possible for nucleus to attain this stability uh, uh, after doing these kind of uh, conversions okay so uh, i think uh, we can stop here um, okay so uh, so I think this is okay. And remember that this is a chargeless particle. These neutrinos are chargeless particle. And with the spin half, okay, these are having spin half. Uh, let's say, um, so the, the, this, this is having spin half value. The neutron is having spin half value and the proton is also having spin half value. Uh, and uh, the electron also having spin half. Okay, then anti neutrino should have minus half. Then only this this will balance half and half get cancel. This this reaction is having angular momentum half here here angular momentum half. So the momentums are conserved here. Spin angular momentum are conserved. And in this case also you are having half here. You are having half here. You are having half here. In this case, you are having, uh, sorry, the, in this case, you are having the positron, which is having minus half, okay? Here we are having half. So these two can, can, can cancel and this will again balance. So this these are fermions with the spin half, half integral spin, and the anti-neutrino is having minus half, neutrino is having half, electron is having half spin, positron is having minus half spin. So this will, uh, will, uh, um, study again in particle physics uh, in the last video. Okay, so that's uh, about the beta decay introduction. So we will go through uh, Fermi theory of beta decay and selection rules uh, allowed and forbidden decay.